Today we're going to be touring New Orleans and in honor of New Orleans and Hurricane Katrina. Today we're also going to be talking about the science of dam building and the new movie San Andreas. Welcome to the Drawing Board. I'm your host David Franklin and today we're going to be talking about some damn interesting stuff. When Hoover Dam was being built, the entire goal was to let as much water as possible pass through so that they'd turn the generators and make as much electricity as possible. But that's not how all dams are built. Today we're going to be in New Orleans and those dams are built a little bit differently. Their goal isn't to make energy, their goal is to not flood the city. Sadly, in the case of Hurricane Katrina, that's not what happened. And we're going to go on a side note for a second. I want to say that as an engineer and for all the engineers around the world, our job is to keep people safe. And when we mess up, a lot of things mess up and lives are actually at stake. So engineering is no joke. Uh, yeah, I'm going to get back on track. But seriously, for all of it, all of you out there who are non-inventors, Keep in mind that uh, it's your civil duty almost to keep us in check and make sure that, that our failures don't go unnoticed. So anyways, getting back to it. At Hoover Dam, you want a very, very controlled flow going through the canyon so it's not ripping through the dam, but also a lot of water per second so you can generate lots of electricity. And that's definitely not what happened in New Orleans. They built levees and levees are basically sea walls, big giant walls that are basically supposed to keep all the water out. But essentially, they're built exactly the same. You see, water is very, very heavy and very powerful, so it takes big, strong walls to keep it back. Water weighs about one ton, which is the weight of a small car, for every cubic meter, so it's extremely heavy. In the case like Hoover Dam, you're stopping up the Colorado River, which was strong enough to carve out the entire Grand Canyon. In order to stop it up, you're gonna need some really powerful concrete there. Not only that, but that concrete's gonna have to sit on something really solid, not just on the sand where it can wash away, but down into the bedrock, either the river bottom or down to the very, very tough dirt at the bottom of the ocean. Dams are made so that they can keep things together. Their primary concern is to hold up lots and lots of weight under really adverse situations. They plan for the worst to happen, or at least they should. And so for today, before we start talking more about New Orleans, we're going to go ahead and talk about the new movie, San Andreas, and tell you if Hoover Dam could really even break. In the new movie San Andreas with Dwayne The Rock Johnson, a 9.6 magnitude earthquake hits the world in California and wrecks everything all the way across the country, including Hoover Dam. But is it really possible? Well, first of all, let's talk about what a level 9.6 earthquake would mean. First of all, it's really not even that big of a deal. In the 1960s, in Chile, there was an earthquake that was like 9.5 on the Richter scale. So 9.6 isn't even that out of there. But that being said, 9.5 on the Richter scale has an energy equivalent of 2.7 gigatons of dynamite. Okay, that's not even funny. That's so much explosive power. That could cause a lot of damage. Maybe not how much the movie said, but certainly a lot of damage. But that being said, it couldn't have happened in California, and that's because leading seismologists say that the San Andreas Fault isn't even capable of producing an earthquake over a 7.6 on the Richter scale. And since earthquakes are measured in exponents, that's almost 10 times less powerful than the movie think is gonna happen in the first place. But the best thing about today's Hoover Dam argument is I don't even have to do that much math. Hoover Dam is made with over 600 million tons of concrete. That is so much structural integrity right there that basically nothing is going to happen. And in the movie for it to release the kind of water that it does, it would have to release about 130 times more water per second than it does on an average day, which means it would have to be completely destroyed. So could the level of earthquake that reached Hoover Dam actually be capable of doing that? Well, first off, no. But here's why. A level 9.6 earthquake hit San Francisco. They degrade over time. It's called aftershocks. So basically, it's going to get less and less powerful. Well, here's the thing. Hoover Dam was built with a 0.1 horizontal acceleration acceptance. And I know I'm not saying that right because I'm not a seismologist, so I apologize. But basically what that boils down to is Hoover Dam isn't even going to start breaking a little bit until it encounters a level 10 magnitude earthquake on the Richter scale. 
Keep in mind, it was only a 9.6, and that was when it's in San Francisco, and the San Andreas Fault is only capable of producing an 8.5 level magnitude earthquake, so the only thing Hoover Dam is ever going to see is something less than an 8.5 that is degraded over time because it has hundreds of miles to cross there before it even reaches Hoover Dam. So no, nothing's gonna happen to it, and even if it did ever experience a level 10 earthquake, which isn't even what the movie said, it would be experiencing less than a 9.6. If it reached a level 10, it would just start cracking. In order to release the kind of water that it did in the movie, it would have to be completely destroyed to lose that kind of volume over time. So no, thanks again, movies. But unfortunately, you're just Hollywood magic. So now that you know how and why dams are built, let's talk about what went wrong in New Orleans during Hurricane Katrina. Essentially, two things went wrong. One, the builders did not anticipate the sea level rising as much as it did, and two, they did not anticipate the kind of force that was going to come Helicopters. You don't have to go home, but you gotta get the hella out of my video. <laughs> I suck. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, but seriously. Basically, there's two things that happened. One, the original builders did not anticipate the sea level rising as much as it did, so they didn't expect the water to go over the sides, and they also didn't expect it hitting, number two, with the kind of force necessary to break through the walls. So the sea walls were built so that it has about five feet for the water to not go over. That's from the top of the waves, that's about five feet to raise. This isn't like a lake, when it rains a little bit and the water level rises. We're talking about all the water in the ocean from high tide it would have to raise another five feet, which is basically impossible unless you have a level five hurricane blowing over 140 miles per hour with your winds, in which case the wind blows it at such an angle that it starts to pick up at an angle. And when it starts picking up at that angle, it starts getting thrown over the sides. That's level one of flooding. Keep in mind that about one cubic meter of water weighs just about the same amount as a smart car, and it's hitting at 140 miles per hour. So imagine fleets upon fleets of smart car running into the sides of this levee at 140 miles per hour. It's amazing that it only broke 30 times considering they never anticipated that kind of force. But this brings me back to my original point at the beginning of the video. When engineers screw up and they don't anticipate for the worst, and this is, let me tell you, this is something I learned on day one of engineering school, is that when you mess up, people can die. That was not my lesson, but that is the hard truth about being an engineer. The thing that I learned in engineering school, just because it works in a perfect scenario, in lab test conditions, does not mean it actually works in the real world, you see? If it fails under the kind of adversity that it's going to face on a regular basis or even in a once in a lifetime kind of power like we experienced in Hurricane Katrina, it does not truly work. It is a failure. So thank you so much for watching the drawing board. I hope you like what you saw. If you liked it, go ahead and like and share this video with a friend or a family member. If you want to see more, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you can see today, we're actually not in New Orleans and we're not in the studio that we're normally in. I'm going to try this a little bit more because it's a little bit easier. We got this lovely lake here and lots of trees over by my new apartment complex in Florida. Sorry about posting the video too late last week. That's because I'm moving to Florida from Arizona. So it just didn't happen on time. But anyways, if you like what you saw, like and share it. Please subscribe. If you have any ideas for any builds or topics or discussions, go ahead and let me know. Seriously, I'd love to do them. Go and let me know in the comment section below. And we'll see you next week when we're going to be talking about air resistance and how you can fly inside. Man, my arm is getting so tight. I'm going to be jacked after this.